morning guys, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. Welcome, it is a bright and warm and sunny day outside today and I am sitting in my house all bundled up and my lips are blue. I am freezing, hence the warm coffee. I think you can see the steam coming out of it. And I've got a hot tea as well. Good morning, Shelly. I was just saying, it's beautiful and warm outside and I'm sitting here with blue lips and freezing and dare I not open that door and bring the warm air in because my guys are out working in the heat and they want to come back and settle down in the coolness for a little while. We are very fortunate now that we've finished things off in here and have um, not just the insulation on the walls but the the finished walls, which are keeping things extremely cool in here. We have not had to plug in an air conditioner. We do have them. I don't like using them. I just like the natural air, um, but we haven't even needed to plug them in. So it is nice and I just have to deal, I guess. I have to warm up. Before I got on here, I went outside and stood in the sun for a little bit so that I could warm myself up. I've got like goosebumps on goosebumps. It's crazy, but anyway. That's just me. So what are you guys up to? What are some fun and exciting things you guys have done um, in your neck of the woods recently? We've been doing a lot of new things. I've been enjoying my morning walks. And while I'm out doing my walking, I am exploring and looking for a new plant every day that I can um, identify and learn its uses. We are surrounded by so many amazing medicinal plants. Good morning, Miss Diana. So glad to have you guys joining me. Ooh, that worked good, the coffee's warming my hands. This is what I was up to yesterday. I was foraging some St. John's wort for myself and a friend of mine who doesn't have it growing abundantly in her neck of the woods. Um, we, it's a nauseous weed out here. Uh, it's, it's all over the place and it has so many uses. I picked a little bit, but not a whole lot of the yarrow. I'm going to make um, tinctures and, with the um, yarrow and the St. John's wort, but I'm going to make an oil extract with the St. John's wort. And I also harvested um, tree sap off of a lodgepole tree out here. I'm going to forage more of that. Um, we're going to be making some uh, salve with the uh, pine sap. So it's 92 right there. I believe it. We've been very fortunate. We've only had a handful of extremely hot, hot days. The guys are working in the direct sun, though. I mean, it's been in the 80, high 80s. Um, last week was very hot. We had like 110 here at the house, so about 101, um, probably three out of the five days last week. So it has been getting hot, but like I was saying, it stays so nice and cool in here, and I, I'm sitting or... I'm in the kitchen. When I'm in the kitchen, it's not quite as bad, but when I'm sitting working on the computers and writing, I just get cold. I'm not moving. <laughs> so you'll have to excuse the blue tinged lips today. <laughs> it's a new color I'm going with. <clears throat> One of the other things that I was really blessed with this week was, um, well, this weekend, we had a friend um, unexpectedly visit and he brought me a new bike, which I'm extremely excited about. It has 27 gears versus my 12 on my bike. And let me explain. The Trex bike that I have, I've had since I was 18. And it's still in good shape, but when I ride it out here in these hills, um, it just labors itself with the gears and it makes it very difficult to go up and down the hills. I would much rather just have like an old BMX bike that does, doesn't have any changeable gears. But this was an extreme blessing to enable me to be able to uh, condition my body, work on my um, re-strengthening my body and riding these mountains because what I'd like to do eventually is be able to uh, put my bow on my bike and get out and do some hunting off of the bike. It's a great way to get around and it's great exercise. So good morning, Miss Tammy. I just realized that I did not send messages to those that need notified so give me two seconds here but share with me diana is i know you've got something cool to share what you've been working on today that would be awesome to share and tammy has been busy decluttering and i would love it if you'd be 
bold enough to share some of your before and after pictures, sister, because I know you will inspire others. Uh, you guys saw my, my ratty house that was like overloaded with stuff and now it is it is nice so you know it's a process we all have clutter we all have junk but um it is so awesome when you can finally you know get it under wraps and just do the things that we wish to do good morning terry good morning craig i know shelly's been doing some neat stuff too it's just nice to learn something new to do something new um to do those things that are um, at the back of our mind driving us crazy. We all have those things. So, Craig, I am anxious to see what you do with that couch that you shared the other day. Craig does upholstery of old furniture and new, but his old masterpieces are amazing. He's from back east, so if you guys are looking for somebody to do upholstery, he is the one. It's, it's amazing, the stuff that he does. If I was closer, he'd be redoing that chair up in my office. All right, bear with me a second here while I share this. And then I'm going to branch off on um, some really cool celebrations we have going on in our community. Also some sad ones. All right, here we go. There's one and two. They've been invited. So I ask you guys all the time, what are you drinking? You know, it's really important that we drink enough um, throughout our day. That's something I struggle with. Uh, as I shared earlier, I've got the coffee warming my hands right now. It's like 90 degrees outside, but it's freezing in here. I've got my hot tea. My guys are always laughing at me. I've got my two bottles of water and this one too. They laugh because the whole table's like nothing but a cluster of my cups. And that's because I am constantly making an effort to make sure I am drinking enough. Okay, you guys have been... Oh! That was interesting, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, so I don't know what just happened here. I know that this fell, but I don't know what happened with my screen, and I don't know if it'll swivel. I sure hope so. I hope it goes back. Am I... Rotate your turn. You can turn your phone while recording. Well, that's great. I... It shifted it. All right, so now I'm sideways, right? Am I crooked? <laughs> oh, you guys are gonna love today's topic. It's gonna fit right in here. All right, so now I've got to play some games here and try to make this work. I'm not gonna hold this the whole time, so bear with me here. All right, in the meantime, Terry says, good morning, my dear friend, praying for, your, for the place to sell, no matter where I know God will watch over me. Oh, a place for you to live. Yes, I and I will be mentioning that. Craig says, good morning. Thank you for the kind words. Diana says, I've started two crock pots of bone broth, soaked wheat overnight. It's in the dehydrator and I can grind it for bread. And Shelly says, I pulled the carpet from my bedroom yesterday. I am getting rid of my large bedroom suit so it has been polished and is probably ready to sell if that stupid Seymour button is going to fight with me and I'm sideways. This is great. All right, hang on a minute here. I got to do something. This is going to drive me batty. <laughs> what a trip. All right. There we go. Now maybe, just maybe, it'll rotate for me. Watch, I'll get it set up and then it's gonna go the other direction. Yep, it did. <laughs> I have no idea what the stupid thing did when it fell. Maybe if it falls again, it'll go right. Nope, ah, unbelievable. Telling me that I can't rotate my phone while I'm recording. <laughs> Am I? This is hysterical. Okay, so when I am this way on the screen, am I sideways to you or right side up? <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, so. Oh, you guys have been... Okay, after this Facebook Live, I'll be checking 
a huge fig tree. Oh, very nice. Very nice. That's what Diana said. Tammy says, I will share a few pictures when you are done. I don't know how to share it during, okay, during the live. Awesome. That would be great. I am upside right. <laughs> okay. Um, Terry says, I drink hot green tea and tons of water. I'm like a fish when it comes to the water. Oh, that's awesome. I struggle with that to drink enough water. Okay. Good morning, Charles. Now I'm sideways. So my sideways, okay, so I am still, <laughs> now you're right side up. Okay, right side up. Good morning, Jill. Hello, my dear. Okay, I don't know if I'm sideways or right side up at this exact moment. Um, but to me, I am sideways and the screen is sideways. So I'm going to go off of here and we're just going to continue. This is funny. I'm curious what that lot, the finished product will look like. Maybe it might just be an audio this week on, on YouTube. But anyway, oh my word, what a cluster. Okay, this is kind of funny. It kind of pertains. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delve right into this right now. Um, so much amazing stuff is happening in our community just leave things alone. You're, you're right side up. That's what, okay, good. So I'm looking at me sideways. If you guys see me right side up, perfect. All right. So anyway, um, Chad messaged me this morning and he's got amazing stuff going on. You know, we've been praying for Chad. I'd like to continue having you pray for Chad. Um, but it's so amazing to see God answering prayer. I would like to ask you to keep Terry in your prayers, uh, for he and his wife, June, um, Terry does really neat stuff. I'm going to just share a little bit of something here on you, Terry. Terry volunteers his time to a nonprofit organization that goes into places where, uh, there's been hurricane damage or flood damage and he volunteers his, um, construction, um, abilities on these projects. So, um, keep him in your prayers also because on his last trip he did, um, injure his shoulder. Uh, so keep him in your prayers, but what an awesome, awesome thing, um, to do and just keep he, he and, um, his wife June in your prayers and also, uh, for, um, Terry's, uh, current place to live is possibly going to disappear for him. So continue to pray that he has a place to live. He is, a bold and crazy fellow just like us and is willing to live in a wall tent and that is an option as well. Um, but let's just pray that uh, God opens some amazing doors there. This is funny. I cannot watch the screen because it's like breaking my neck. It just makes my head weird. So, because <laughs> I'm sideways. Anyway, um, Diana pointed something out to me yesterday and uh, regarding Kim and Martin that I wasn't aware of. I hadn't been on Facebook for a couple days because we had that unexpected guest and he just left yesterday. Oh, and I was so, my heart was sad. Um, Kim has been an extreme inspiration this whole time. As you guys know, um, Martin had a heart attack while he was jogging with his daughter and uh, he has been in a coma ever since. It's been well over 120 days. I mean, it's probably pushing close to 140 or more days, I would think at this point. Good morning, Chad. And um, he was doing really good. Uh, she's been praying for her miracle. And you can only imagine how hard of a task it is having your spouse in the hospital um, in a coma, having to make decisions by yourself, raising seven kids by yourself, and just taking in the day-to-day, -day, not to mention the weights of it all, and and how that's playing, you know, and weighing on your heart. And she has such strong, strong faith, and she brings tears to my eyes with her post. She's just really ama an amazing Christian woman. And uh, through this time, you know, Martin has been really showing amazing signs of uh, just non-typical behavior for his condition. And it has been as though he can hear them. Uh, he follows them. Even though he's in the coma, he turns his head when they move in the room. He responds. His, you can see that he, he 
in my heart I feel that he's been able to hear them all this time and things things started to go in a negative way for them his organs are starting to shut down so he is in hospice care right now and they're not giving him a very long period of time and you know Kim shared this in her post yesterday but you know she's just got such incredible faith and she's viewing her miracle in that you know they've had these last however many hundred and twenty plus days to spend with him versus him leaving this earth that day when he had the heart attack. It would have been so abrupt and they wouldn't have been able to share their feelings with him. And like I said, they really feel that they've been able to communicate with him even though he hasn't been able to communicate back. So just please keep them in your prayers. You know, it is just such, it's a sad thing, but she's at the same time, you know, she's mourning the loss of her husband and the kids are going to be mourning the loss of their dad, but at the same time they're celebrating him um, being with Jesus and and being able to be with uh, those that they've lost previously so you know that's where today's discussion comes from is our growth through the suffering and seeing the big picture and you know I read her post to the mountain man yesterday and I couldn't do it without crying it's just it's been an amazing walk to see the things transpire and all of the blessings that have been uh, bestowed on them and the miracles that God has presented to them. You know, it was very clear that God's hand was in all of it. And those are the things that make our faith strong. Those are the things that encourage us and also remind us why we are Christians, why we are believers, why we have the faith that we have. Thank you, Terry. Terry says he's praying for Martin and his family. And Stephanie, welcome. Glad to have you joining. If you guys see me turning my head that are just joining in, it's because my screen is sideways. Even though you guys are seeing me upright, for some reason my screen is sideways. So um, anyway, I am going to read some things to you guys today, and I, I want to also ask you to keep a couple other people in your prayers. Um, our friend Randy could use prayers, and uh, Craig, excuse me, Diana and Craig could use uh, your prayers also. Craig needs a medical treatment uh, or procedure done, and it's very costly, and uh, they are praying for God's guidance on that, so just help them pray that God provides so that they are able to um, take care of this procedure and get better direction for Craig. Um, oh, that's really crazy. My prayer list is not on my... Huh. Oh, yes it is. Okay. Um, anyway, I'd also like you to pray for my girlfriend, Carolyn. She had a detached retina last week that has her... Um, in a very awkward position. She has to sit like she's reading an iPad or an iPhone. Um, she can't lay on her back. She can only lay on her side. And um, she's a go-getter like I am. So it's just a little hard to be in that position all of a sudden. Um, continue to keep Roger and Wendy in your prayers. And uh, we have a, a long prayer list down below. If you would please keep those people in your prayers, I would greatly appreciate it. Good morning, Miss Helen. I hope you are doing good today. Um, also, uh, our friend David could use some prayers. My list isn't fully showing on my screen. I think the enemy's fighting me this morning, but that's okay. We're gonna, I'm going to keep fighting him back. Uh, but view the list below. But there have been so many celebrations and so many good things happening despite um, you know, the chaos and the suffering and the hardships and the all of a sudden hard times. And you know, the thing we got to remember is that is a constant. That is going to be a constant. Whether we are a believer or not, we are going to run into hard times. But I believe that it is also true that if we are a believer, we are going to run into harder times because um, the enemy is going to try to take us off our feet and keep us from sharing the good news and the gospel and being able to share our testimonies and being able to just be a light to others. He's going to try his darndest to keep us from doing that. So 
you know, I look at that as a positive challenge for me to, you know, keep making sure he's packing sand and heading back where he belongs. Good morning, Miss Holly. All right, let me see here. Shelly says, hearing is the last thing to go during the dying process. They have been so blessed to be able to say their goodbyes. Yeah, I know that just made my heart so full to know that he has been able to hear them. It's such a shame, you know, that he's been progressing um, in such a positive way and then to have his organs start shutting down. But you know what? God's still bigger. God could still work a miracle. So we just need to keep praying for them more than anything is just keep praying. God can work all kinds of miracles. And we have to always remember that, you know, through the storm, um, he can bring beauty through the storms. We've witnessed it, we experienced it, we are living it, and I know many of you have also and are, and you know, it, it certainly builds perseverance, and it certainly builds an incredible testimony, and like I have shared with you guys before, it's so important that we share our good news, and we share our testimonies, and we share the blessings, and we keep our eyes on those blessings. Kim is just amazing, you know, there has not been one negative post on her you know, she has certainly had rough days, but even when she posts a, d a day that she's having trouble, she's still such an encouragement and such, you know, there's still positivity in it. It's just, she's an amazing person and I love the way she walks out her faith and I think that that's a prime example of what we need to look like in our process. I'd also like to ask that you keep Mona and Ken in your prayers. And before I forget to mention this, I did show you guys the St. John's wort that I harvested yesterday. Today is the last day that you can get in on the free um, Herbal Preparation 101 mini course. And you can do that, the link is down below. But after today, it is going to be a $229 course, I believe. Um, and right now it is a free mini course to you guys. So that is a huge thing that you do not wanna miss out on these free herbal courses and um, preserving courses and the different things I'm sharing. I would love to see all of you taking part in those because there is such benefit to it. I know all of our time is limited, but you can always sign up and uh, especially this one, participate in this at a little bit of a later time if now is a little bit too crazy for you. But it's treyerwilderness.com slash herbal preparation 101. I want to share this with you because this is something that... Um, we talk about a lot and it has been the subject of quite a few of our previous um, live videos this year and that is what is to be found on the other side of our comfort zone and I just wanted to remind you guys of this. Life will only change when you become more committed to your dreams than you are to your comfort zone. I'm gonna repeat that one more time and let that sink in and I will share the image later. Life will only change when you become more committed to your dreams than you are to your comfort zone. So many of us hang tight in our comfort zone because it's comfortable. I don't want to be in a comfortable spot. I want to be in an invigorated spot. And somehow or another, I tend to always be there. And I guess that's because I'm, I am willing that to be the case. Diana says... That darn Seymour button is going to be the end of me. Today, Craig mailed out a script that he is submitting to CBS Studios for the TV program Blue Bloods. Please pray that, oh, that is way cool. Come on. Oh, I can't see the whole thing. All right, I'm gonna check and see if I can see it on the iPad. But that is fabulous and you can absolutely be certain we'll be praying on that. The rest of you can see that, so add that to your prayers. Here is something else I wanna read to you guys. You know. All of these live videos, my hope is that through God speaking through me, that you guys are being encouraged. And each week, an area of your life and an area of maybe even your struggles is being broken down and you are becoming new. That is the purpose of the new beginnings. Every day we have an opportunity for a new beginning. And, and that can be viewed in a lot of different perspectives. Um, you know, that we failed the day before, we feel we failed the day before, and we need to start again. Um, however you are viewing the new beginnings, I, I hope and pray that 
These are nurturing and helping you and making you think and also making you act on, on things, just like stepping out of your comfort zone. But this is something else that we've touched on. If you knew how hard it was and how long it took to rebuild my little universe of peace and happiness, then you would understand why I'm so picky about why, sorry, who I allow in my life. You know, as we progress through this, we are, uh, and, and we're, we're all learning, you know, to hold on tight to our faith, to step out of our comfort zones, to leave the fear behind. But we've talked also about, you know, sometimes in our lives, there are people in our lives that are creating that negativity and, and making life difficult. And there are people that we wouldn't necessarily need to keep in our lives. And I've told you guys about guarding your time and guarding your lives and guarding your peace and your joy and your happiness. And this really resonated to me when I read this, you know, that this is, this is what we're trying to accomplish and that we are creating a life that we love despite other people not understanding it. And I'm speaking for myself there, but I know that it may pertain to others as well. But that you create a life that is made for you and that is perfect for you and your family. And if other people don't get it, that's not your fault. And that's not any reason for you to try to need to alter what you've created for yourself to make somebody else happy. It's about making, creating a happiness in your life and that of your families and not worrying about the outside. And that's what we talked about the last two weeks too, is not worrying about what other people think, but holding tight to these new creations, the new schedules the new, that we might be creating for ourselves, the new organization, the decluttering, the removal of abundance, learning new skills, becoming better in the kitchen or in the garden or anything. And, and growing in our faith. So again, I'm going to read this. If you knew how hard it was and how long it took to rebuild my little universe of peace and happiness, then you would understand why I'm so picky about who I allow in my life. We need to surround ourselves with people that enrich our lives. I'm so grateful that Diana um, introduced me to Kim. And, and I'm so thankful for each and every one of you because you guys add such goodness to my life and to my daily life. It's just so neat. Uh, my, my Wednesdays and other days are the same, but my Wednesdays are really full and I've had such amazing conversations already this morning and just seeing God's goodness around and seeing how people are growing in their faith and trusting God and, and how God is shining and showing and proving himself to people that are holding steadfast regardless what they're walking through and that is really important and you know you guys really do need to pat yourselves on the back and I mean each and every one of you because at times all of you have come to me and shared your different struggles and what you've been walking through and I'm seeing you guys shining and I'm seeing you guys progressing and I'm seeing you guys walking to the other side of a lot of these situations that you've shared with me and you know guys that's huge and and that is what this is about um kim really ins inspired this and that is you know growth through our suffering you guys have seen us walk out some pretty nitty-gritty stuff and i wanted to ask you guys to please keep us in your prayers the next week and a half we should have somebody coming back to reevaluate our home um, from arizona and we are praying really steadfast that they are the right people because um, things are getting pretty nitty gritty for us financially and uh, we are going through our food cash which will be a real benefit when it comes time to move that we won't have excessive weight and we can restock according to our new location and so forth but at the same time you know um, it's it's easy for things to become um, concerning uh, we are we are running out of propane and don't have the funding to replenish that. Uh, so I've been doing the Wim Hof for over a year, which is doing the cold showers. So I'm all ready for that. I don't know about the rest of my family. But it just adds um, additional, not necessarily concerns, but additional routines to our day to make things happen. And uh, 
It's all part of this process. I am certainly not complaining, but we could certainly use your prayers and we are praying that this is the final thing. Also because we are getting late in the season and we are going to need to be concerned about being prepared for the winter that's ahead of us and where we are going to be and uh, how it's all gonna look. Uh, foraging firewood and everything. I mean, we our first year here, we had to forage the firewood as we needed it because we did not have time through our build to be um, harvesting that and, and setting that aside and filling a woodshed. So again, we've done it before. We can do it again. Uh, just don't know what our future holds, but we are trusting God for that. But if you could keep us in your prayers, that would be great. I am going to read from 1 Peter 1, 3 through 9. All praise to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show you your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith through many trials, I'm sorry, so your, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world, the whole world. You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. I love that. That is so awesome. And this is titled, Growth Through the Suffering. Yesterday, we saw that when we focus on God, we are in a better position to grow in maturity and godliness. When our suffering persists, the Lord may also have other purposes in mind. To increase our trust, you might think the happiest people are the wealthy and famous, but the truly contented are those who are at peace with God because their faith has been tested and they know he has only their good in mind. To strengthen our dependence upon him, the Apostle Paul testified about how his persistent thorn taught him reliance upon the Lord's grace and strength. Instead of believing that we can handle things on our own, we likewise learn to depend more fully on God when our circumstances leave us powerless. To manifest Christ's life in us, is another area and God wants us to be a living example of the con conduct and character of Jesus Christ. For this reason, he uses suffering to sift, sand, and prune whatever doesn't belong in our life. But in those hard seasons of change, he also sustains us, providing all that we need in order to persevere. He also wants to purify our hearts. During the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said that the pure in heart are blessed for they will see God. The purification of our heart is on an ongoing process. Sometimes it takes difficult situations to identify the things that keep us from delighting in our relationship with God. Do you trust that God loves you and wants the best for you? Decide to be more open to the work he wants to do in your life through the hard times. So how many of you would agree that hard times are tough? I mean, it is, it's a given. Those hard times can really wreak havoc on us and really bring us to our knees. But at the same time, that kneeling position is where he wants us to be. He wants us to be pulling closer to him and acknowledging his presence. That's why it's so important that through the storm, regardless how horrible it is, you can be sure there's going to be a blessing. And we need to focus on those things and... And be, be able to be a light to others through our hard times. You know, when we go through hard times, I love the way Todd White puts it, that when, when a Christian is squeezed, Jesus should come out. And, and that is the truth. When we are squeezed, we should be pulling tighter to him, not questioning 
what's ahead. It's okay to question though, and it's okay to doubt, and it's okay to be scared. Those are, that, that is our flesh, and, and, and that is a normal reaction. But I will tell you that as you progress in your faith and you continue to learn to pull into him and pray to him and communicate with him and, and seek him through all the struggles you may be going through, those negative feelings and those negative thought processes are going to leave you. And you will find a true place of peace and comfort and joy and happiness even when you're walking out the tough stuff. Diana says, I can certainly empathize with where you are. Yeah, you know those crazy times when you, when you hit rock bottom, when things are low, when finances are tight, when it could be anything. You know, we hit, we hit these places and, you know, I've learned before that going without, um, I don't know, I just found a lot of strength in that place. Uh, that the things that were of concern didn't matter because he continued to provide. So I'm holding on tight to that place. And as I'm getting creative in the kitchen using my, um, my larder and, and going through my larder and uh, itemizing things and, and getting down to the nitty gritty. You know, I may not be able to meet the requests of my family. The mountain boy wanted pizza and uh, we opened our last bag of uh, vegan cheese uh, when our guest was here with chili. So I don't have enough cheese to make pizza. I do have pow tomato powder so I can make the sauce. You know, so I was doing a little shuffling and maybe coming up with something, but if I can't meet all needs, I can still continue to try to um, be creative. I've been making all kinds of unique dishes. Tonight will be uh, pumpkin soup uh, along with steak sandwiches. So trust me, it's not that they're starving. It's just that they're, the creativity is kicking in. We've got, we've got food. It's just that we're getting low on things. So I know God will provide. I know God will take care of us. And I'm, I'm not worried. Uh, knowing what you can forage in your surroundings is important. So that herbal class is a good one to take. And uh, that is why we do what we do. Because when you uh, are lacking in one area, there's growth in another. And uh, that's also part of preparedness is knowing that when... Uh, maybe the cupboards are bare that there are things in the in the woods that I can forage and, and utilize so I can make flour from a lot of different things in our surroundings so again that's not a concern um, but creativity is important and creativity and inspiration are two really key components I feel to helping us through the tough stuff because without creativity and inspiration of sorts, uh, we tend to um, get melancholy, get stagnant, um, and our, our, uh, it's harder to be challenged. I say that because um, when you have a creative mind brewing and you can keep that creative mind brewing, you can come up with all kinds of great things to push you through some of your hard things. And that means even if the creativity is painting a picture, it will give you joy and happiness and contentment and keep your mind from thinking about the suffering or the struggle you might be going through. And when we are creative minded, uh, we tend to stay away from the negativity. So keep that in mind because when you're going through that tough spot, I know it's easy to sink into those negative thought processes but if you can keep your creative mind going and doing new things and and doing things that make you happy uh, it makes that process so much greater now I don't think you guys have commented more okay so something else that plays a role in this is the big picture and that is seeing the big picture through the storm clouds it can be really hard and, and sometimes it might take vis visualization to do this. Um, 
maybe things get pretty uh, gloomy and you can't you, you can't fathom what's on the other side. You can't think about what's on the other side. We've been there. We've experienced that. You know, you still got a plan in our position. So we still had a plan, even though, you know, we didn't have the funding to make those plans, but we needed to put a plan in place. And for the longest time, it was very difficult for both of us to have a plan because we couldn't see that far ahead, which was good. You know, um, I like how Chad says to me sometimes that, you know, things are a little foggy, but it's a good thing because it's keeping the blinders on and, and, and that's good. Sometimes we need the blinders on and that could be for us to inspire a little inspiration of our own and to be able to visualize possibly what might be on the other side and, and to give ourselves a distraction. But once you start visualizing things and once you start taking that step like we've talked about in the past, that once you finally take that first step, you're allowing God to meet you. So that's stepping out of the comfort zone to allow God to meet you in your plan. And if that isn't God's plan, he'll take you down another path. And just, just being willing to keep your eyes and ears open to his uh, speaking to you as well. Shelly says... <laughs> Stink and see more button. Some of the best meals I have ever had are the ones made just before getting groceries. They kitchen the kitchen sink type of meals. Exactly where you're just throwing stuff in there. And it's kind of funny because I don't follow very many recipes. Pretty much the only recipes I follow are, are dessert recipes. And even then I'm adding to them or subtracting from them or whatever. But my guys, especially Austin, the mountain boy, wants to know. So what is this meal called? And what was funny is when Randy was visiting this weekend, he wanted to know also, so what is this meal called? Which I thought was really funny because uh, he witnessed me concocting quite a few different meals as, as the weekend went on. So exactly. And you know what? Again, that enables you to be creative and to think out of the box. And um, it also enables you to be blessed that you have food on the table because there's so many people out there that do not. And like I said, our larder is not empty. Um, it's just, it's just getting low. So, you know, learning to be thankful for what you have and, and the meal, regardless if it isn't or isn't pizza, you know, and, and that's not the way my family is anyway. You know, he, he would, or either of them would make a request. It's not something that the world's going to end because uh, we can't do that. It's just a request. And, and it's rare, actually, because I'll ask them what they want, and, and they say they don't care and leave me to be creative. So I'm having to be a lot more creative than sometimes I'd like to be, and I imagine some of you moms out there are in the same boat. Nobody wants to tell you what they want. You need to come up with it and concoct it, right? So here we go. The next thing is the big picture. Step back and see the big picture. 1 Corinthians 16, 9 says, A great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. One day, the Chamber of Commerce in a small town invited a successful businessman to come and speak. The local economy was bad, and they were discouraged, so his job was to motivate them. He took a large piece of white paper and made a red dot in the center of it. And he asked them, what do you see? One person replied, I see a red dot. And the speaker said, fine, but what else do you see? Others chimed in a red dot. The speaker asked, don't you see anything else besides the dot? And the audience responded with a resounding no. The speaker said, you've overlooked the most important thing. You've missed seeing the sheet of paper. Then he went on to explain that in life, we are often distracted by small dot-like failures and experiences. They keep us from seeing the blessings and successes that are more important than the disappointments that try to monopolize our attention and drain our energy. Paul wrote, a great and effective door has opened to me and there are many adversaries. Opportunities and obstacles, they go together, like macaroni and cheese and like fish and chips. It's a great truth, guys. It's such a great truth. They are hand in hand. 
So now Paul didn't deny the reality of the opposition he faced. He just chose to focus on the opportunity it presented. The poet wrote, two men looked through, through prison bars. One saw mud and the other saw stars. What are you looking at? Are you so preoccupied with what is that you've lost sight of what can be? If so, you need to step back and ask God to help you see the bigger picture. And this is a truth, guys. We would not be where we are today if we were not focusing forward and looking at the bigger picture and trusting God for that bigger picture. Uh, you know, it is a choice to see the shiny penny, to see the stars. Um, you know, there's also the same, a same analogy of two men in a hospital room and one saw stars and the other saw a brick wall you know we all have the same 24 hours and we all have the same choices it's all dependent on the choices we make and and keep in mind that we are living through new beginnings so if you're choosing to see the mud one day you can certainly change and look up at the stars and, you know, with this food situation I mentioned, you know, it is, it is a matter of seeing the blessings and also, you know, what's coming from it. I have been making all kinds of older recipes or being extremely creative and making these amazing meals. And just another off-the-wall example. Our dog has been really sick. She has, I have to ask you guys to pray for Copper. Um, she was really sick, um, vomiting and uh, just, you could tell she wasn't feeling good. And uh, the one night I had to take her out and it was like two o'clock in the morning. I'm, I was exhausted, but you know, taking her out. And I'll tell you what, seeing the shiny penny when I stepped out that door I didn't care what time it was. The stars were so vivid and so bright and they just looked like they were hanging down on strings above my head. It was just amazing. I mean, the entire sky, you could, I, there wasn't a star you couldn't see. And you know, that is what we have as an opportunity every second of our day is whatever's happening, we have the opportunity to see the good versus the negative in it. And even if our first instinct is to see the negative in it or be disappointed that you have to get up at two o'clock in the morning to take a dog out and clean up a mess, it can be quickly redirected. And like I said, we would not be where we are today if we did not have a strong faith in God to carry us through this you know this journey this journey has been long for us and and there's so many other people that their journeys have been longer and it is a choice to to find happiness in the smallest of things to find blessings in the smallest of things my man came in and brought this into me it's not a perfect heart but it's also a really cool piece of um, I believe it's quartz and it's a shale type quartz that actually peels. I got to look it up. I didn't get a chance to look it up, but it's just the small blessings in our days and the things that help us step and, and take those stepping stones out of our demise, out of our struggle. And, and just to see the good, even in, in the most devastating times, like with Kim, it just blows me away, you know, that, she is holding tight to and walking such a beautiful walk through this thing and i know that she has touched so many people and guys as we walk through our struggles regardless what they are and people see us in our in our persistence and our perseverance and and know that what we're walking out is hard but see us giving it our best shot and see us putting our best foot forward. And even on a bad day, because guys, we are entitled to bad days. We all have bad days. We all have days where the weights are consuming and the enemy makes extra special efforts to uh, bind us on those days and try to throw us off kilter. And 
you know, those are the days we need to get on our knees and focus on God and, and not be afraid to ask for help. You know, so many people are afraid to ask for help when they're in tough spots. And, and I, I feel that's almost foolish because it takes a really strong person to be able to ask for help. And it is a step of, a courageous step to ask for help. And it does not make you weak in any way, shape, or form. So that's why I'm always so thankful when you guys reach out and ask for prayers and are, are willing to share your, your prayer needs with me that either myself and my family can pray for you or we can pray silent prayers or um, you know untold prayers as a, as a community. But the power of our community is so strong and and what we are doing while we are praying for all these people is really powerful because like I said earlier, you guys should all be patting yourselves on the back, not in a prideful way, but in a, you know, you should be celebrating. You should be celebrating your growth and your relationship with Jesus. You should be celebrating your inner strength and, and the warrior that's forming as you're walking through these hard spots. And that's both men and women out there. I'm not, you know, this is all of us. And and as a whole and as a, as a community, you know, we are strong. And it's leading me, this has popped in my head a couple times, so I'm going to share this. I don't have it in the notes below, but I will add it later. I have been reading some really amazing books. Um, really great novel. I'm on the second one right now um, by Frank Peretti. And you can find his books by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Frank Peretti. It's P-E-R-E-T-T-I. And um, the first one I read was uh, This Present Darkness. And it was an absolutely amazing read. And I think that every one of us that has walked through a hard time, is walking through a hard time, or you walk through a hard time in the future, should have read this book and have, um, this book will plant, paint a picture for you. It will um, place knowledge in your arsenal that you can utilize at a later time or through your current walk. I highly recommend you reading that book. Diana was reading it and recommended it, and it was it was a good book. I could not put it down. I, I almost didn't start the second book because I was afraid of what that might do to my schedule because I had a really hard time with the first one putting it down. Um, how many of you guys like to read? I have thought previously about doing um, a live video where you guys all come and share different authors and your favorite books. Um, or maybe I will create a, a post on our Facebook page where you guys can share your favorite authors and the favorite books you've read because I just, there's nothing better to me than getting cozy somewhere. And I've been doing a lot of that out in the wild, um, either carrying a chair or carrying a blanket so I can sit on a, a felled tree um, and just sit somewhere and read. I've also been writing out in the wilds and that has been an absolute blessing. There are no distractions and I can really be creative. I had had two articles that I need to finish for tomorrow. So I've been busy. I've also been going outside to stay warm. <laughs> so crazy. I couldn't imagine if we had an air conditioner going in here. I wouldn't even be in here anymore. Shelly says, I. I read like 50 or more books each year. I am sure I read more than that. I have actually created an Evernote list of the books that I read so that I can keep track of them. I figured you guys would love to read. Um, reading a book is just a neat way sometimes also, if you will, to escape our struggles. Um, it's awesome. I feel like I'm always divinely gifted with the perfect book for my circumstances. You know, sometimes when you're going through a really rough patch, you don't want to read a book that's very similar in nature and it's all humdrum. You need that book that's going to uplift you and lift you out of that place. And it's nice to have choices. It's also nice to have that person divinely gift you with the book title, Diana. <laughs> so... I encourage you guys to dive into books. The other great thing is reading the Bible. The New Testament is amazing. I love reading Ephesians. I love reading John. I love reading Paul There's and James. I like them all. There's just so many 
great inspiring stories in the Bible that can be extremely uplifting. And, you know, so many of us have a Bible and keep it close, but we don't read it very often. But I'll tell you, it's really a great book to dive into when you're going through a rough spot and when you're not. Diana says, I don't usually read fiction, but Frank Peretti's books are ones I can't put down. The visualization from him is great as well. Awesome. I have those bookmarked. And actually, my library had visualization. And is it illusion? I think there's one called illusion, too. And the library had those. So I was excited about that. Um, and that's the other thing. You know, I know Shelly does it as well. There is a library app for our local library. I don't get time to go to the library, and my best reading, unfortunately, is done at night most of the time, unless I'm like really hooked on a book like I was in the last one. Um, but my reading is done at night, so I'm using my iPad. Uh, so going to the physical library doesn't help me much, but our library, you know, it's in a town of 100 people, but it's connected with bigger networks and resources and you know there's a lot of ebooks and audiobooks another audiobook i really suggest for you guys is the screw tape letters by c.s lewis i have that on hold right now and i'm really anxious to get that i'm going to try i'm i'm down to no more writing of articles at the moment i am writing um two books but when i'm doing my web work sometimes i can listen to things when I'm writing, I can't listen to anything with words, like music. It has to be just music without words because it messes with my concentration. Craig says, Peretti's books are incredible. I highly recommend them. Oh, my goodness. Are they ever? And, you know, one of the reasons I am mentioning these books is because they are about spiritual warfare. And I've talked about this with you guys previously in little dribs and drabs. But I am seeing more and more how the enemy seeps in. And you can call me kooky if you like. But I think that in all aspects of life, we should be knowledgeable. I teach you to be prepared in your homesteading skills and your gardening skills and your cooking skills and your medicinal skills. And spiritual warfare is something that affects us on a daily basis, but we are most of the time unaware. And we have been experiencing things because we are being very bold Christians. And I am very proud to be that way. And I will not stop doing that. But I know that because of that, we are going to be under attack. And we have been experiencing some of that as of late. And I, I also found uh, Derek Prince on YouTube. And I have one of his books as well. And uh, that is another great avenue uh, to educating ourselves on how we can change oftentimes some of our circumstances if we are aware of what is happening. And I think it's really important that you guys take time to educate yourselves and be aware of some of the things that could be happening while we are going through our rough walks. Um, it's pretty eye-opening, and I really, really would love to see you guys report back and tell me that you've read some of um, Frank Peretti's books. Uh, this Present Darkness is the one, his first one, I believe, and uh, a great place to start. And it is very well written. It is really amazing, like these guys are saying. It's addicting. It's addicting to read it just because it's so suspenseful. You want to know what's going on next. And um, I think it's really important for us to be aware of the spiritual warfare that is in our world and around us and how it plays such a big role that many of us are unaware. So that's what I'm going to say about that today, but we are going to talk probably more about that in the future. And compile some lists of your favorite books. I will either be putting a post out on Facebook so that we can all share the different books we enjoy or doing something a little different with it. I'm not sure yet, but I feel that that's something we should be sharing because it is really nice to pick up some good books. I know Shelley reads a lot of the um, Amish stories uh, by, oh, help me, I forget her name. I can see her, but I can't think of her name. 
and I have I read some really cool um, Christian books as well that were really really good storylines and were also quite addicting so and I have a couple dear friends that write some really amazing stuff and Terry says have to go pick up my truck have a wonderful and blessed day God bless my friend God bless you as well praying for you keep me posted on how things are going Beverly Lewis thank you Shelly my other half of my brain today thank you so yeah you know diving into a good book and taking ourselves out of our current situation sometimes can be really really helpful but I'll tell you what too I do a lot of devotional reading I do a lot of um, listening to Christian podcasts but the best and most fulfilling thing I get in my day-to-day -day is reading the Bible even if all you have is 15 minutes I, I know you will gain from it and I find greatly that God leads me to the things that I need to see when I need to see them Sometimes I question why I read what I read for the day and two or three days later it comes full circle and I totally understand why he was sharing that with me. So there is a lot of truth in the word. It's all truth. And when we start delving into that, um, it helps in finding our peace and our joy, our happiness, our comfort, our peace and our stability. Um, like I said, I couldn't imagine my life without him in it. I know we wouldn't be where we are today, um, mentally, physically, if we were not consciously and on a very um, devoted path to Jesus. He leads our house. He leads the way. And um, that's an important aspect in a home. And that certainly causes the enemy to not like that. But if you guys have special prayer requests or you know somebody in need, please let us know. Please list it below. And if you do not ha currently have a walk with Jesus and you would like one, don't hesitate to reach out to me. It is one of the most priceless and uh, most beneficial things that I've ever done for myself is pursuing and deepening my walk with Jesus. Shelley says... She has 47 books read in order and you get to meet a community as books mention characters from another series. Yeah, um, it is really very cool um, the way Beverly Lewis's books are written. There's actually one of hers is in a, in a movie now that's on Pure Flix. I'm trying to think which one that is. You might know Shelly. Um, and I also have another friend. Um, my brain is not cooperating with me today. I will share her, um, Kathy Bryant. Kathy Bryant and you can look that up too her books are actually free on Amazon because she views her books as her ministry she did used to charge for them <coughs> excuse me and she took a huge leap of faith because that was a big part of her income and uh, she shares those for free now and her series are amazing same thing you get to really know the community and link everybody together. Um, it's very well written and hers are very addicting. I've, I've already read one of her books in a day just because I couldn't put it down. So do be careful with those as well as Beverly's and even um, uh, Frank Peretti. It's hard to read Frank Peretti's in a day. His are long books, but they're really, really good. Um, yes, it's The Shunning. Thank you. Yes, so uh, if your members on Pure Flix, you can watch that. That is a really great, great movie. Um, but Kathy Bryant, you can find by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Kathy, and it's C-A-T-H-Y, and then Bryant, B-R-Y-A-N-T. I'll put the link to that and these other authors down below um, when this is over. But guys, we are, we are blessed with a relationship and an open door to um, communicate with God when we have problems and struggles. And we, we are all blessed with the same gift. We all are offered eternal life and uh, a walk with Him if we are willing to accept that. And I just want to encourage you guys you know, to pull into Him. Again, if you do not have a walk with Him, all you need to do is ask him to forgive your sins and to come into your heart. And, and keep in mind that when you do that, 
that things are not going to change in the way that everything is going to be flawless and um, perfect. It's not like that. It's, it's that he is there and he is going to help walk you through any situation that comes your way. He will be there to hold your hand, to carry you, to bless you. And uh, it is an amazing, amazing thing. So many people accept Jesus into their hearts and expect everything to change instantly. And that's not the case. But to have him present and to have him there and to um, oftentimes have the release and the freedom of the weights that we've been carrying as a result of our sins, um, he takes them all away. And he renews us, and it is a new beginning. So if you need help with that, please don't hesitate to private message me, to email me at survive at treyerwilderness.com. And uh, it's so worth the effort. It's so worth taking that step. So step out of your comfort zone if that's something that you haven't done. I highly encourage it. But guys, I'm going to say a prayer. My neck is getting a kink. I know I'm straight to you guys, but my screen is crooked. And I've got to go make some Treyer Crazy Killer Bread. And I, thanks to Diana, have my wheat berries uh, sprouting so I can make that. I will do that on Saturday. Um, and I need to make my guys lunch. So, guys, thank you for joining me and for adding your input. And just please keep Kim and Martin in your prayers and their family. Uh, such a hard time. But at the same time, there's so, so many blessings there. And God has certainly been ever present in that whole situation. And keep all of our uh, prayer uh, requests below in your prayers as well. You guys are all in mine. And I'm going to say a prayer for us right now. Papa, I just thank you for being present. I thank you for your constant hand in the good days and the bad, and for being present and helping us walk through these struggles that occur in, in life. It's part of life, and it sometimes it's part of our day-to-day, -day, but you have such a great way of renewing and re-strengthening and, and giving us boldness to stand tall and strong through our hardships. You create warriors when we allow you to, and I think that it, part of our our goal should be to step out of our comfort zone on a daily basis and cross that line to seek you to become that warrior that we need to and to have faith like a giant and to be able to just have no fear. That is, that is such a strong and powerful thing to have such a close walk with you that there is no fear, just trust. And I just ask that you work in each of these people that are present and those that are watching the replay and just help them in their walk. We all have different struggles and we all have a story. It's a given. Every person on this planet has a story. They've walked through some sort of devastation in their life. They've walked through it. Sometimes those scars linger and sometimes those scars tend to weigh us down. And we need to learn how to process those scars. And through your word and our walk with you, you break those, those scars and those hurts and those weights down. And you move them and you move us to a better place. We just need to keep seeking you. We need to be inspired and creative. And we need to be bold. And, and through those things, we will be strong in our in our journeys and oftentimes I know that in our weakness you you do great things and there's purpose in everything and that can be hard for some but I know that you have great purpose in everything that transpires and I'm always excited to see what you're going to do and it's been a really huge blessing to be in this seat and be able to see what you've been doing for everyone that is part of our community for ourselves included and I just want to thank you for what you're going to do ahead of us and what you're going to do for each of us. And I thank you for strengthening each of us in our walk. I just ask that you wrap your loving arms around everyone. Give them a peace and comfort and a strength to continue stepping forward. As long as we're moving forward, we're in the right direction. And as long as our eyes are on you, we're in the right place. So thank you for what you're going to do. And thank you for what you've been doing. And we ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.
Okay, guys, I am wishing you a fabulous, blessed, joy-filled day, regardless what it is that you're walking out. Stay strong, hang on to him, and know that you're not the only one walking through tough stuff. We're gonna see tough stuff, and I have this feeling that there's gonna be more tough stuff ahead. And the stronger we get in, in Jesus, the stronger and the more able we are to walk through these struggles. So, and I'm grateful that you guys are walking through our struggle with us and that we can be there for you as well. So, guys, take care. Have an amazing day. I love you all, and I will see you next week. God bless.